ensuring that the training takes place. Her experience spans over 30 years and she has worked at Rhodes University before. She has also worked in the NGO sector in Johannesburg, supporting higher education learning technology and open educational resources projects across sub-Saharan Africa. She continues to be attached to Rhodes University in South Africa. The third speaker is Dr. Dumisani Nguenya. He is a part-time lecturer at Lubane State University Development Studies Department. Full-time, he works as the executive director for Grace to Heal, which is a peace-building and community healing organization. He's a co-founder of this uh, organization. He shared that his research interests include trauma and memory, transgenerational transmission of trauma, peace building, and trauma nexus. He is also an external examiner for universities across Africa, and he has also taken an interest in online teaching. Uh, the last but not speaker, is Dr. Vusumuzi Maposa, who is the director of the ICT department at Lubane State University. He got his PhD from the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. And at Lubane State University, he is the focal person for ICT projects that support teaching, learning, and administration. His research interests are on transformative concepts of technologies that include ICT for development, industry 4.0, data mining, knowledge management, semantic webs, and e-governance. He's also well written and has presented papers at national and international conferences. Um, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to welcome our speakers uh, most sincerely, and uh, we thank them for taking time out of their busy schedules. So without much uh, further ado, what we will do, I will give a background presentation so that we put this meeting into perspective. After my background presentation, I will engage the speakers that I have introduced in a conversation uh, so that you understand uh, some of the key lessons and points of reflection uh, that emerged during this uh, training. Okay, so that is my profile, but you will get it when uh, you receive this, uh, this uh, presentation. So I will start by talking briefly about the Association of African Universities in case there are people that don't know who we are. The Association of African Universities was established in 1967. It's a network of 400 universities across Africa. Uh, Lubane State University is one of the members, so are many other universities that are represented in this meeting, I'm sure. We have regional offices in East Africa, North Africa, and recently the United States of America. Uh, our mission is to enhance the quality and relevance of higher education in Africa, and strengthen the contribution of higher education to Africa's development. Uh, if uh, we are asked who really we are, we like to say we are a prestigious network that provides a continental platform for its member universities to meet, to network, 
to share knowledge, to share experiences, broker partnerships and collaborate with each other in a diversity of areas related to the interests of the universities and the interests of the academic faculty in those universities. When the COVID-19 pandemic started, AAU was very quick to respond and our form, format of response was through high level advocacy, uh, targeting governments, ministries of education and also ministries of ICT. The reason for this was that we recognized that governments are critical, African governments are central uh, to building resilient higher education institutions. We've also been involved in various capacity building initiatives. The Lubane State University capacity building is one of them, but there's also a faculty modular training that has been going on for the past three months where academic faculty meet every Thursday. Uh, to benefit from capacity building on how to teach online. We have also been brokering partnerships in an endeavor to support our universities to keep their doors of learning and teaching open. We are also synthesizing a lot of information and disseminating this information. So we've written statements, we've partnered, we feature a, a great number of our programs on the AAU television. We run webinars, we are also very active on social media and we have a COVID-19 page on our website. AAU has a vision concerning e-learning in African universities and what we envision is all African universities supported to migrate their programs online. We envision e-learning becoming mature in all African universities. We envision national research and education networks supported to provide high-speed internet to all African educational institutions. So that is our dream uh, in terms of e-learning development in African universities. It's also important to note that there are several open source platforms that uh, educational institutions can benefit from. In this meeting, we will be referring to Moodle, but there are other uh, open platforms that universities need to, to look at. For example, Nextcloud aims to replace the uh, Dropbox, uh, the paid for Dropbox, the SharePoint. There's an equivalent of, of, of that in terms of next cloud. Big blue button is like a Zoom, but it's an open source platform. Koha is a library management uh, system. So in this meeting, we would like to refer to Moodle, just in case there are people who don't know what Moodle is, Moodle is a virtual learning management platform where academics can create accounts and create their courses and enroll students. Moodle has many functionalities such as uh, you can do your assessments, you can put your learning activities, you can share your videos, you can do so much on Moodle. So Moodle uh, replaces the face-to-face -face classroom and tries to mimic everything that normally happens in a face-to-face -face environment. 
you might be wondering why mudu but the reason is because mudu is uh, free is open source that's why other platforms that are there like blackboard uh, they needed they needed quite significant investments for universities to be able to use that's why mudu has taken over the LMS or learning management system market in the world. This slide uh, that I'm showing you is from the CEO and founder of Moodle. He made a presentation to one of the World Bank meetings, and you can see that uh, in Africa, Moodle is the most uh, common. The orange line shows you uh, the, the, the Moodle prevalence. Globally, Moodle uh, occupies or owns 67% of the market. Rece uh, when the COVID uh, be, uh, pandemic started, we also surveyed 75 of AAU members and they told us that the majority of them were using mood. Actually, 34 out of 75 of the universities that responded said that they were using the mood learning management system. However, we realized that the challenge was that even though the mood learning management system is installed in most African universities, it has not been made mandatory through policy that academics use it. So it has been sort of, you, are, you can use it if you want. So now with the pandemic, this is changing, obviously. Concerning the Lupane State University virtual training, we will hear more about it from the speakers that we have lined up, but I will briefly tell you that uh, it happened because the Vice Chancellor asked for, for the training. The estimated costs for running the training were prohibitive, so we issued a call for Moodle experts to volunteer their time and help us to run this training. So we thought it would be good to pilot uh, working with volunteers since we did not have financial resources to do it. So we were surprised when we received 90 over 90 volunteers offering to assist. And then we grouped them into groups. Uh, they were groups that were responsible for each of the seven weeks. The training took a total of seven weeks. In each group, there was a lead facilitator and there was a support facilitator. Then there were mentors. The volunteers came from all over. Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Macedonia, Eswatini, South Africa, Austria, Pakistan, India, UK, and Australia. My apologies if I missed one of the countries because the people really came from everywhere. So the structure of the training was that we had virtual contact sessions every morning at 10. Then we had afternoon sessions every afternoon at, at uh, 2 or uh, 12 GMT. And these sessions were between 1.5 hours and 2 hours per session. There were four stages of, of, of the training. Stage zero was orientation. Stage one was getting the staff to uh, the uh, trainees to start with educational technology, introducing them. Stage two was course design and technology. 
after stage two, we did a revision and consolidation week. Then we proceeded to stage three, which was online and blended teaching. Stage four was open educational resources and activities. After stage four, we did another week of revision and consolidation. So this uh, training took a total of seven weeks with at most two sessions per day. But during the revision weeks, there were times when we just had one session uh, per day. So there were over 200 uh, academic staff that were trained, but only 114 completed the entry survey. So there were 32% females, 68% males. And then I would like to use some of the statistics from LSU to show you what uh, the issue of e-skills capacity gaps in African faculty look like. When we asked uh, about their experience in Moodle, 79% had not used Moodle or seen its features. So quite a large number of the trainees were really engaging with the Moodle learning management system for the very first time. And then when we looked at their skills, competence, we noticed that multimedia skills like graphic design, uh, attractive PowerPoint slides, uh, animations, th those kinds of skills were rated low by most staff. They said they did not have those, those kinds of skills but a large majority said they were comfortable with the Microsoft Office. They were comfortable also working on the internet. When we asked them about their online course experience, 54% of them had never been an online student. This is important because if we are to teach online, we need to know what it's like to be an online student. Uh, the experiences with online course facilitation, 83% said they've never facilitated an online course. Uh, so that was also important because uh, it meant that there was a need for this training. We also asked them about platforms such as uh, Coursera, edX, Udemy. These platforms have developed some quality content which academics across the world are taking advantage of and students are also taking advantage of. But 81 out of 114 faculty said they did not know about these platforms. So meaning that uh, content that's maybe freely available was not known by most of these uh, academics. And during the period of training, most of them were connecting from home. Some of them were also going to the campus to be able to access internet. And others said they were connecting from other places. And most of the trainees were using laptops. The majority had laptops to be able to connect. 38% reported having very slow internet, uh, about 43 out of 114. The, the trainees were very committed to the training. 
most of them said they were willing to spend two hours a day on on the MUTU training, which was very good. And some were willing to spend three or four hours. The priority skills that they told us they needed, they wanted to learn about the mo the app, the mobile app for Moodle. They wanted to learn about analytics, how to do assignments and grading on Moodle. They wanted to know how to communicate with students virtually. They also wanted to learn how to measure the performance of their students, how to find and integrate open educational resources. And they also wanted to learn how to navigate around the Moodle learning management system. So the lessons from the perspective of AAU are virtual training is taking root in Africa. Uh, there is a community of Moodle experts that we can leverage. African faculty desperately need training to move their courses online. Partnerships are key uh, and fundamental if we are to do this properly. We learned from Professor Kuipa that university leadership with a vision is critical because he had a vision about what needs to be done and did something about that. The ICT directorates in African universities are critical to the success of any e-learning project. So in conclusion, from the AAU side, we are reflecting on post-training. What does it take to achieve actual course digitization for all the courses in a university? What really does that process look like? The volunteer community approach was very good as a pilot, but in terms of sustainability, there are issues. We have since received about five requests from other universities in Africa asking for the same training. So how do we do it? The challenges for scaling up uh, and we see opportunities in terms of the content that uh, was used during this training and also content from platforms such as Coursera and other open educational resources content. So we are issuing a call to action uh, concerning the agency of the need for digital skills training for African faculty. I can't uh, emphasize this more. We are in a crisis and we need to do something about this. Support is needed from African governments and other well-wishers what can we learn from the volunteerism spirit of the Moodle uh, volunteers that we work, worked with? Can we organize ourselves at a national level and also do similar volunteerism uh, approaches? So uh, thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, I would now like to call upon uh, my speakers. My first uh, respondent will be the Vice Chancellor, Professor Patton Kuipa. So the speakers have uh, slides where they would like to use slides, but would like to use this to do this in a conversational manner. So, Professor Kuipa, um, uh, uh, you are most welcome and uh, thank you very much for being with us in this meeting. 
maybe to start us off, I thought you could briefly tell us about Lubane State University, uh, some information uh, about the university so that those who don't know about it can, can relate to the university. Thank you, Prof. Kweep. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. academic staff members, and uh, the rest are uh, supporting staff. We also have a student population of about uh, 3,700 uh, students, and they are broken down in, in equally, equally into what we call conventional students and uh, block release students. Block release students are a type of student that are already in employment uh, and come to the university for blocks within a semester, blocks of about three weeks, four weeks uh, within a semester, where they receive face-to-face -face instruction. So that is, that is the university in, in short, uh, located in Blau uh, near Blauai, uh, more or less between Blauai and Victoria Falls, and uh, a, a, a premier upcoming university. That is that is the short uh, of uh, short end, uh, in terms of the university. The, oh, thank you. No, proceed, Prof. Please. please thank you. The university uh, was clo was closed for face to face uh, interactions with students on the thirtieth of March, twenty twenty, when as a result of the nationwide COVID nineteen induced lockdown within the country. Uh, our lecturers then immediately moved to emergent remote learning using low technology platforms that were sensitive to the challenges of connectivity, bandwidth, and the type of devices that students were using. The platforms that were immediately available to the university uh, lecturers were WhatsApp, YouTube, class, uh, Google Classroom, Zoom, Skype, and emails. Uh, conversion of course materials in that short period of time to virtual was uh, almost impossible uh, for members of staff that were accustomed to lecturing in front of students. The university had Moodle installed on its, on, on its uh, servers, but uh, the use of Moodle was on a voluntary basis. The university management identified a skills gap amongst lecturers relating to instructional design and also relating to the use of Moodle as a learning management system. We then approached the Association of African Investors, just like Nodum said, and uh, they came on board and mobilized several volunteers from all over the world. The skills gap that we had identified as management. The LSU vision for digital learning uh, LSU shall endeavor to deliver the academic project through blended learning, incorporating short periods of first on-campus practical lessons in each semester and longer periods of off-campus online teaching and learning using the Moodle learning management system in combination with other low technology platforms such as WhatsApp, YouTube, and emails. Being mindful of the uneven access and connectivity within the student's body. Lecturers shall be encouraged to build asynchronous learning activities that create different learning experiences for students in recognition of the various barriers faced by the students, such as power availability, internet connectivity, and social context. LSU shall leverage best practices from sister institutions in order to improve faculty and staff effectiveness in serving students remotely and online. Faculty and staff shall be empowered with opportunities to enhance their skill sets, including developing new learning models and evolving their teaching methods in order to align with students' needs, internal successes, and heroes 
shall be spotlighted in order to encourage other cohort members to, uh, to do likewise. The strategy, LSU strategy for supporting staff and students, all academic staff members uh, have been trained and we hope that there will be continuous training uh, on online delivery methods. Research has also shown that data bundles of between 20 gigabytes to 40 gigabytes are adequate for online teaching for our staff. And due to financial constraints as a small university, we provide 20 gigabytes data bundles to each of our lecturers per month. The Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology Development, which is our uh, local ministry in Zimbabwe, negotiated with internet service providers for zero-rated internet connectivity for students when accessing university websites, and is also currently negotiating with Treasury for funds to procure devices for needy students. In order to minimize the impact of the virus on students' learning outcomes, the university has successfully joined the Coursera for Campus Response Program that grants students and staff free access to over 3,800 courses until 30 September 2020. Lecturers that have enrolled on these courses have reported that for them, they've able, have been able to effectively, to learn to effectively teach online and also how to, uh, have learned to, how to package materials and how to present those materials more effectively, just from learning from the Coursera, Coursera course content and how it is delivered. The e-learning strategy and the policy is still under development, but we envisage that the policy shall outline the code of conduct required for professional online activities in and outside the university and cover issues of accessibility to those with particular needs copyright issues and other intellectual, intellectual property rights issues, data protection issues and privacy issues. The university shall use the Moodle learning management system because of its open source nature and the opportunity for customized interactions. Challenges and opportunities going forward, there is need for the university to upgrade its digital infrastructure, continue to train its academic staff members, and ensure that students, in particular those students in the first year, understand the change from face-to-face -face learning to remote and online learning. Online and remote learning have widened existing inequalities amongst our students uh, and made meaningful learning impossible for the students that are coming from poor backgrounds. The lecturers, I, I hope, will use the newly acquired skills to train and assist other academics in Zimbabwe and to within the region uh, on instructional design best practices when using the Moodle learning management system. COVID-19 has presented unprecedented opportunities for the university to collaborate across borders uh, within the region and uh, across the continents. In conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the university is very grateful to the Association of African Universities, and its worldwide volunteers for the invaluable virtual Moodle training that was provided to its faculty and staff. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kuiper. I just wanted to make one follow-up. Is the university fully open now as we speak? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, the university managed to, uh, to complete the semester. We have just completed the semester. Uh, we, what we did was we continued with the online teaching and then we mobilized our students uh, for a three week period staggered, three week periods which were staggered for examinations. And uh, all of our students have now written examinations and we are in the process of marking and uh, collecting results. Okay. And, and then in terms of the structure, structurally within your organogram, who actually spearheads e-learning? 
or is that something that will be articulated in the new policy? Thank you for, for the question. It's uh, something that will be articulated in the, in the new policy, but I envisage that there will be an online administrator uh, who will lies with our information and communication technologies uh, uh, department. And also that there will be a, a form of center for, for ex of excellence uh, on online uh, delivery methods uh, that mm -hmm. we have experts that will then assist our academics uh, in their day-to-day -day, uh, problems when they are interacting with our students. So oh, okay. that, that is, that is the, the in, what we envisage. Yes. Yeah. No, thank